Please welcome Marty O'Neill. I grew up on a dairy farm in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, my mom was a World War II bride from southwestern Oklahoma. And about every other year, my dad would put all eight of the O'Neills in the O'Neill Mobile, and we'd drive from northeastern PA down to southwest uh, Oklahoma. He had a number of different ways on how to sort of manage this farm, but, but you know, one thing about dairy farms is they have what? Cows. And one thing about cows is what happens, they need to be milked every day, no exceptions. So one year, my dad left, beho left behind my brother Jerry. He was the oldest and hopefully the most experienced. Well, you know, there's something you have to do on, milk, on, a, on a milking machine. Milking, milking machines are those things, you know, that separates the, the milk from the cows. And they have to be cleaned every day. And in the old days, they had to be cleaned independently because they were mechanical devices and they wore independently. Well, Jerry didn't quite have that process down. And we think probably he was a little preoccupied because later on we found out that the bulk tank, which holds all the milk, that was full with beer. There was going to be a big party as soon as the O'Neill Mobile got out of town. So one thing led to another. The milkers didn't get cleaned properly. The milk inspector came. And th things weren't working quite tidy at the O'Neill farm. And he shut the farm down for a week. 25% of the monthly revenue, from my mom's point of view, 25% of the meat and potatoes. So needless to say, my, when we got back, Jerry was in a heap of trouble. And I'm not sure Dad ever took another vacation. And as hard as it is for me to think about this story, I don't always blame it on Jerry. So when we're kidding around, we blame it on Jerry. It really was my dad's job to sort of put the processes of the farm together so he could go on vacation from time to time. And he certainly hadn't gotten that done. See, our farm was run on heroics, like probably a lot of your businesses. But in, but in agriculture and farming, we live by the, the rule of the harvest, the law of the harvest. And the, and the rule from the law of the harvest says you can't cheat the law of the harvest. You can't hang around in the spring and go to the beach in the summertime and drink umbrella drinks and expect something good to happen in the fall, right? There's hard work involved. The harvest is always going to come. And you're either prepared for it or you're not. I've exited a number of different companies, and now I work with companies all over the country. And one of the things I'm shocked about over and over and over is that the people that run companies are not prepared for the harvest. Whether it's a change in the marketplace or, the, or the, maybe the death or somebody in the organization is gone, there's a change that's going to happen. There's a harvest that's going to happen. And the question for you today is, are you ready for it? Is your company ready for it? And then what do you have to do to get ready for it? And that's what we're going to talk about. In 1999, uh, before 9-11, before Enron, before the death of General Motors, I was the CEO of a company called CTX, or Alphabet Soup. I had just finished writing my first book, uh, Act Like an Owner, and I was pretty full of myself. Uh, the founders of that company wanted to get out of the business, so we did a fancy uh, financial mechanism called a leveraged management buyout. So we went around looking for investors all over the country, and they were going to come in and put money into the company, and then the people that were currently running it were going to operate the company. So I, I, I found this guy that I wanted to talk to in New York. His name was Saul Fox. He ran a private equity fund, and we wanted to be a part of that private equity group. So I practiced my presentation over and over and over. I was just sure I was going to give a 10. And you know, after I gave my presentation, I thought, any moment now, Mr. Fox is going to say, Marty, that was a brilliant presentation. This is a fabulous marketplace we're in. We have to be a part of that game. Where can I wire you the money right now? But instead, but instead, he began to ask me questions. And first I thought of it. He's asking me questions. I'm Marty O'Neill. He's asking me questions. I just gave him a 10 presentation. How can he ask me questions? The first question he said was, Marty, can you, can you tell me the, the three or four things that really drive value in your company? Uh, and I answered it, but I didn't do a great job. And then he followed on with a bunch of other questions. And the second one that stuck in my head was, what are the things you do in every day to drive the value? What's moving the needle in your company? What are the things you and your group are doing every day to move that needle? I didn't have a great answer for that either. So as I was, driving, I was taking the train home from New York to Baltimore that day, I was reflecting on the fact that I wasn't given the gift I was looking for, which was the money. But I was given a gift that's lasted a business lifetime. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. The gift is this. Every business leader, every founder, every person that starts a company, you have to know exactly what drives value in your business. 
And then you have to have everybody in your organization being able to sing off that same sheet of music. You have to know what you're doing every day. It's driving value in the business, right? You know, some companies we meet know. Maybe some of your companies know what drives value. A lot of CEOs know, but guess what? They don't share it with everybody else. I, this, is, this is called the Mount Sinai approach, right? The, the, this is like Moses coming down from the mountain, and he has the two stone tablets, and he said, these are the things that drive value in our company. Well, that was a pretty good deal for Moses and God, but it's not a good way for you to mandate how things work in your company. You know, other companies are run on uh, bailing wire and bubble gum. It takes a different hero every day, like my brother, to sort of make things work. And that's a little bit like the Star Trek series. You know, Scotty is the, is the engineer. He's going to keep it from breaking up, right? It takes a hero. You know, there's other, other organizations that have, like, little, little fiefdoms that pop up, up and down. And they all maybe run passionately, and they might have a good business area. They might be doing well. They might be making profit. But guess what? There's no concerted value. No one knows what the whole enterprise value is going to be, right? And that's like the operas. Who goes to an opera here? Have you ever been to an opera that's the four singers at the end? Whoa, 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 whoa. It sounds great in an opera, right? That sounds fabulous in opera, but that is a lousy tune in music. Right? So what are, the, what are the things that we need to do every day to drive value? And that's what we're here to talk about. When I talk to companies, I make them look at their company in 90 different ways. I have them look at the 90 different dimensions of value for their, for their company. And I make them write that down. And I make them have a look at how their company works. And I ask the whole leadership team. And guess what? They all have different answers on what does drive value. So the idea we're trying to do is get everybody on the same, the same sheet of music, right? Get everybody thinking on what does drive value in our business. So then we take them through what we call visioneering exercises and some things called contour maps. We begin to draw things out. We have them create a list of what's working and not working. And then they, then they begin to get a feel for, indeed, these are the things that we should be doing, right? These are the things that we should be doing to drive value in our company. You know, there is a... Uh, there was a CEO that we'd often laud, Stephen Jobs, right? This is a guy who turned around the Apple computer company because he had an idea on what drove value in their company. He had an idea that he could take the competencies and the core skills in their company and begin to leverage them in a new market, right? And that's what we all need to do. We need to begin to understand what are the things that we have in our company? What are the things that we have in our company that we can leverage and go into new markets? What are, the, what are the adjacent markets we need to jump into? What are the markets that we need to stay away from? Where can we add real value to our company? So we go through these exercises and we get everybody thinking, we're getting everybody very excited about the direction of the organization. And we find out that, indeed, uh, these are things we can do over and over and over again if we understand what, what the value drivers are, right? What the value drivers are. So to kind of, to kind of wrap up, I, I, I want to make sure you're thinking about in your organization, what are, the, what are the three or four things that drive value? Do you know the gift? Do you have the gift that's going to be able to keep giving for your organization over and over? So if you, you go back to your firm and you say, what are the three things that drive value? And is everybody on the same sheet of music? And if the music isn't on the same page, then you have a discrepancy, right? And you can begin to think, we have a gap to fill. We're going to know how to fill that. So I'll leave you, I'll leave you with this. Take the gift back. What does drive value in my company? What are the three or four things that drives value? And what are the things I'm doing every day? And if you can get everyone in your organization singing off that same sheet of music, you have the opportunity to succeed in an ever-changing market and an ever-dynamic changing market. You'll have this control that you haven't had before. You'll have the ability to see things that you haven't been able to see before. You'll have the ability to sort of make better decisions that you hadn't made before. You'll have an, you'll have an ability to move your company in a direction that it hasn't been before. Building value over and over again is the only way you can move your company in this changing marketplace. Thanks a lot.